Okay, welcome to the Monday, March 21st, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. We'll have members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. And Martha Smirsky, member. I will let, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures. Okay, um, so I am going to be sharing my screen. Um, and this is more for people watching via Orca um, for the share screen aspect, but there's some <clears throat> other information as well. All right, so um, for anyone that's viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's Development Review Board, or sorry, Design Review Committee meeting, uh, using this Zoom link here. Um, alternatively, you can call in at this phone number and plug in this meeting ID number. Um, and then you'll be able to ask questions and hear what's going on. If you're having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at this email address. For those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and a note that the Zoom chat function should really only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about a specific item on the agenda or some other substantive item to say, please raise your hand. Um, you can do that physically or if you're on video or use the raise hand button on your toolbar via Zoom um, and then state your name once you're unmuted um, and uh, then we can go ahead after the chair recognizes you. Um, if we have members of the public um, commenters who are unable to attend the meeting and I'll find that out via email, then um, we'll have to continue to the meeting to a time and place certain. I'll now hand this back over to the chair. Has everyone had a chance to look at the agenda and do I hear approval of the agenda? I'll move that. I will second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Ben. And Stephen. Agenda is approved. Unless anybody has anything else to add, we can go to the first applicant. Is anyone here for... 75 Main Street yet? No, she just signed in. I'm trying to send her a different email. I think we're going to have to okay. wait we'll, on her, see if I can get her to get in. We'll move that down the list in case somebody can show up for that one. We'll go on to the second application for 66 Main Street, Overlake Park, LLC, Great American Enterprises. And I think we have somebody here representing. <laughs> Introduce yourselves. My name is Abby Jenny. My name is Abby Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm recusing myself as member of the DRC to help present this application for uh, the outdoor seating for Charlie O's as a project that I will be involved in both design and build. Okay. Either one of you can describe your project. Do you want to describe the table? I can show you um, the lighting from last year. Okay. I'm not sure how to do that. I think you have the photographs that I can have over. Abby, could you yes. speak more directly right into the microphone? I can. I'm so sorry. No worries. No, that's okay. No worries. That's, that's much better. Thank you. Great. No problem. Um, so what, what I have here is the... Um, the front of the veranda that faces Main Street that was from last year. And the only changes we would make is I'm hoping that this foliage along the fence line will either be a prettier sort of fence with real plants <laughs> at some point. 
Um, but the lighting is going to be the same. And I'm going to have Ben describe what they're building because it's hard to describe. And I think you've done it a couple times. <laughs> OK. Uh, so as you're aware, Charlie O's has their outdoor seating. And they were hoping to do uh, some structures out there that would both generate some shade and a little bit of protection from the the a little bit a light rain um, and make something that was a little bit more interesting and attractive than what uh, was out there and so we sort of we meaning flywheel myself and my business partners came up with this plan which is a sort of uh, two individual kind of pavilion type structures that are both like integrated seating and tables that are temporary that are able to be um, kind of pulled away or moved around. They're not necessarily fixed to the ground. Uh, but what they are is a relatively simple structure, except for the, they have um, a varied height and thickness in the sort of partition walls and the seats and um, tables that are on there. And they sort of are these more artistic sculptural objects that are also seating. Um, there's a little bit of uh, privacy screen to them, but you can really kind of see through them and walk through them. Uh, and they would then be sort of put in a little bit of an asymmetrical pattern onto that, uh, onto that empty lot. And that's that's kind of what they are. I'm sort of just going to step in really quick for DRC members. So you have what's in your packet. And then for people who are here in council chambers, um, Ben and Abby sent a couple of additional drawings that have a little bit more about the new fencing proposed um, that is going to be up on the screen that they can scroll through. And if you want to look at the old pictures with the sort of the fake greenery fence that he was talking about, I can show those as well. Right, and thank you, Meredith, for bringing that up. The, in this phase, we were, this is a style that we're proposing to do fencing for this project, but not in this phase. So opening this summer would be back to the sort of uh, other fencing option that Abby was beginning to describe at the beginning of this, uh, this meeting. And if things go really well financially and make sense, then maybe we would get to being able to put in this fencing, but it seemed worthwhile to include it in this application so that we didn't have to come back. The fencing, you have fencing along the alley. Yes. Yep. So here's up there, right? The greenery stuff that was there last year is what would be started with. And there's sort of that it doesn't show very well. You can just come and peek at my laptop if you want. Um, but the hope is to get approval for this is a temporary with the greenery stuff like it was last year but then approval for more permanently the wooden fencing so it would the wooden would the wooden fencing be up part of the year and then come down in the winter but then it would be a you get to keep putting it up or would the wooden fencing stay i think the idea is the wooden fencing would stay okay for the uh, winter as well wooden fencing would go along main street it would go, it would be at two different elevations. It would go along the alleyway at about six feet, and then it would go along Main Street along the sidewalk at about four feet. Uh, and it would not have an opening in it per staffing request from Charlie O's. It would just kind of be this fence that paralleled the sidewalk. Other people get in it. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, the, the DLC had advised me earlier um, when we started doing this that one entrance is great because we can screen people coming into the enclosure, um, okay. you know, and see them leaving as well, which is yeah. kind of what we do. So people would go into the bar and then go around the backside like they did at like the end of last summer when yeah. you switched it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's a, this is a view that shows the sale additional screening and here's the fence along Main Street, which is lower. And then this along the alley, sorry, my mouse doesn't really like me, has the little bar aspect to it. And so that fence is a little higher. 
Yeah, so there are those kind of wooden, I'm going to call them bollards. I'm not quite certain what there really are, but they're wooden things sticking out of the ground now that we were going to utilize to be able to create the drink rail off of as well as that fencing. And I guess we're showing two versions, one with a shade sailcloth and one without it. Not exactly certain how that could work out. It's very similar to the one that is the sailcloth at uh, over the three penny parklet. And I guess asking for permission is whether that would be an acceptable thing to include or not include based on the nature of how sort of organic and irregular these things are it's very hard to model specifically what uh how that sailcloth may or may not work out um so it's a little bit of a are these the, the sailcloths would be removed in the winter correct yes and what about the uh benches little gazebos or whatever um I mean, I think they would stay on the property. They might get moved to be a little tighter for snow, but the idea is that they would they would remain um, on the on the property on the lot. And I don't quite understand the seating or the tables inside. Yep. There. So if you could, because it just goes all different angles and different heights. You got it. Yeah. Is yep. that what it does? It does. Yep. Yep. There, there are both benches and tables, and they're kind of at a standard 18 inch bench height and a maybe a 36 inch table height inside and closer to a 42 inch height if you're standing outside of the thing. But it makes it so that it kind of mixes people together and or creates some sort of like uh, irregular spaces for people to be in, but also creates a little architecture people to sit in and be on. And so the idea is that those, those are wooden slabs of probably hemlock that would be, could be pulled in or pulled out to be able to kind of give it more or less space, but not in a fairly, it's a fairly, the idea is to make something that is actually relatively easy to construct, but has a really unique look to it. Steel frame, right? Steel frame, yep. I assume that doing it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it would be something that would be, the idea is it fits on a trailer. So you one would be able to pull it up onto it. You'd take all the wooden benches and whatnot off of it. Winch it up on a trailer. And then winch it up on a trailer and, and deliver it or take it somewhere else or do something else with it. And the kind of like random height privacy screen. And there is some sort of like elements of wood in there that are also kind of creating a little bit of uh, privacy screen, but it is definitely a, a sculptural object that is also offering some function. And Ben, there would be no regular standard tables around. This would be in lieu of other seating. Uh, no, there would be an option for probably four to six other sort of standard tables and stools. Uh, one of the, I mean, I'll let Abby speak to the to this. Yeah. I would rather not have other tables because we have to move them in and out or lock them up. And it's kind of, this is sort of, um, this was my dream so that we wouldn't have to do that. Okay. So ho hopefully not. Maybe if there's an event or something and we want to bring tables up for say July 3rd or something like that, um, I'd like to have the option, but I'm telling you, we would really rather not have them at all. Okay. Is there a base on the bottom and what's that material uh i think you're pointing to the rectangle underneath the rectangle that was an exploration of like a a footrest oh okay to be able to sort of see what so as this is um definitely a likeness of what we would be building and yes. very but it's not all the details are not like perfectly worked out, but it would have, there would be some foot rests, there would be some, uh, you know, I can't guarantee that all the rods are going to be in the place where they're shown here, but it would look very similar to this project. And there's a floor in it, right? Correct. There's a wooden floor in there. And it would have a kind of a gutter that runs all the way around the top that would bring the water down in a, one specific location instead of kind of having it. Is, is, there's a step up like Six inches there. Correct. Yeah, there would be a steel frame, a steel, a six-inch steel channel is what the 
frame of it would be made out of so that it was rigid enough to be able to pull it around. And then we would use that to level it, which would then create a six inch step up onto it. Are uh, you going to provide any handicap access? This is a great question. Um, it's totally possible if necessary. We had chatted with Abby about being able to maybe they like, you would be able to, as a, in a wheelchair, you would be able to get to any of these sort of um, projecting uh, tables or benches, you would be able to get to just those. When you're on the ground. When you're on the ground. If it was required to be able to get up inside there, then yes, we would create a ramp. But at the moment, that's not proposed because it felt as though you were still able to access it from the outside. You're not so likely to get out of the sun or the rain if you're outside. Not the rain, but the sun is a movable thing, and it is. Uh, you can kind of kind of work around it. Well, and that but, would be an advantage to the yeah. In there, then there would also be shade. If the platform is six inches above. You might think of doing what they do in Montreal, and they just use lengths of diamond plate as a slight ramp based on the, you know, based on the length of it, in order to make, you know, maybe one access for each of the structures. Yeah, that's exactly kind of what we were thinking. If it, if it, I, if it I felt think necessary. You consider that. I'm no advocate for handicapped access. I think that's would be the right thing to do and it should be fairly easy to do yeah i don't think it would be difficult at all to modify to go up and no that would be that you would could be. even you could even probably do a thing with the walkway the dirt and the walkway and the material of the walkway that would get up to it yeah i agree with that yeah we'd be happy to do that i don't think that that's a it doesn't complicate this at all really one other question would this combination structure and greenery be removed from the side of the building? That's not our building. Um, that would belong to Kelly from Splash, and that was left over from the pocket park. Okay. So um, we sort of left it there because it's pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a, okay. te technically, no, I... <laughs> it's a separate parcel, right? Because so it's we on can't a really building on a separate parcel. Yeah. Okay. No, I wasn't sure whether, if that was coordinated somehow or. Okay. It, it sort of looked nice, especially in this picture, <laughs> I think, you know, with the lights and everything. I, I think it looks fine there. It looks like... No, I, it was just a question, that's all, oh. not a recommendation. <laughs> okay. And then Abby did touch on it, but on the subject of the lights, the idea would be to reuse the current lighting. It will be strung differently, but it would be reusing exactly what's already been permitted and what's up there. Okay. Uh, is there going to be any lighting on the gazebos at all? I have a lot of little mason jar fairy lanterns that we've been putting in and out on the tables. They're basically like a mason jar, and they have little, like, tiny lights inside, and they're solar. So we leave them out overnight or during the day, and then we put them on the tables at night. So they're just movable. Mm -hmm. oh, you're not putting any lights in there. You always have the option of putting some cable lights or some string lights inside the framework of the gazebos, and then you have the the strings that come off of them. I mean, somehow you have electricity for the others, so you could tie them together. Especially since you have the poles on the gazebos going up, you could tie to that and then do a perimeter lighting inside if you wanted. With your permission. I, I think this is interesting. I think it's good to experiment with stuff, particularly when it's easily reversible. So, and Charlie O's was the very first place I had a drink in Mount Pillar in 1975. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the only place that looked like a bar to me being from Wisconsin. It still does. <laughs> I, I mean, I appreciate that comment, Eric. This is definitely feels like we're kind of pushing into some architectural boundaries with this, but it is a, a temporary thing. And I really do think it would be a pretty unique, interesting moment in downtown that I think the town would benefit from as well as Charlie O's. 
Are, are you going to paint the metal or anything? Or no, we were going to we were going to leave it and let it kind of. We was going to get a natural patina, i.e., rust. Um, <laughs> can, can you get cork and steel yeah. tubing? <laughs> you can, but not at not at a price point that would facilitate the the, uh, the building of this. But there was a certain kind of wanted to stay true to a certain sort of grittiness that Charlie O's does have. So there's we're trying to keep in that in that vein a little bit. I agree with Eric. I think it sounds interesting. And the fact that it's movable really helps. And the fact that you're using the same, at least for the beginning, using the same screening, I think also helps. Anyone have anything else to add at this point? No, the only thing that I would add to, and I don't know whether it's in our purview or not, is to provide handicapped access. That that can be a recommendation, yep. um, and it's you know it, it probably wouldn't be. I don't think I can put it as a permit condition, but it can still be the DRC's recommendation, and I think it's yep. you know they've said that they would be happy to do it. Um, I do have one question. Um, at this point, it, this it doesn't specifically say on this application anymore that they would need to come back next year. Um, and this is something I want the DRC to figure out. Do they want do they want to revisit this again next year, even if they're doing the same thing? Or at this point, um, is the design review committee happy that as long as it's the wooden fencing that's the the future part of it, as long as that's what's happening next year, if it waits till next year, that they don't have to come back again? It's only if it changes from here on out that they have to only come back? Only if there's a significant change. Okay. I don't think it's necessary to come back. Okay. I, I, the, the only thing I was thinking here, I don't necessarily think it's necessary to come back, but since we don't know exactly what the design is, just to have it up for a year, I don't know. And I don't know whether you need to come back for an, a permit or we can just, that's, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I, I, I did want to realize, and I agree that you, we don't exactly know what this design is. The intention is that the, the wooden fencing is going to have random spaced gaps, random spaced, random sized boards, and random thickness boards. So it has a pretty kind of funky modern. Um, aesthetic to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is definitely um, close and gestural of where it was going and what we want to do, but I agreed it is not uh, fully fleshed out. If that is something that prior to its construction needs, the committee wants to see, of course, we'd be happy to share. Okay, anything else? I can go down through the criteria. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The I think that's an, not adequate to the review. Because it's not, it's not a building, really. But it's a, and it, I would call it an accessory. Sure. So in, in either case, uh, we'll just call it acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. And again, it's an accessory. So again, I could go either way, but I'll just call it acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which project is located. There's really no proposal at this point for landscaping or plants other than the existing um, ex existing uh, material that's used as a to, to screen the area and again that's been approved so I'm just going to say acceptable existing existing uh, 
exterior cover. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screen from public view, acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures, there's existing lighting, but again, there's an option to for cable and or string lighting for the perimeter of the, of the gazebos if you choose to add that. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building or compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings, projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall be cons shall consider the following site furnishings including fencing seating and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings mechanical equipment screening uh, all of those that apply are acceptable accessory buildings and structures New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt streetscape or affect the integrity of existing buildings or proposed new buildings acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Uh, Eric, one, one thing I do want to say though is that I don't think the criteria work very well. <laughs> You're right. For this. Again, and we I just consider this an accessory to an existing building, which is. But I, I think it ought to be put in the notes so that it's 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 not it doesn't really you know match with any other building downtown or anything like that. I, I just think we ought to put that in the notes so it doesn't come back to haunt us later. Okay, how would you like to word that? This, this decision is based on these being temporary movable structures. This evaluation is based on that. Not just the application and evaluation of the application based on accessory structures and temporary movable accessory elements. Because you're, lo you're looking at fencing, which is not as temporary, and then you're looking at gazebos, which are, are movable and so temporary on, only in the sense that they're not nailed down on a particular place, that, intending not to be moved. And, and our one of my definitions of temporary is anything short of forever. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, and based on that, <laughs> speak your name if you're in favor of the application. Eric. This Stephen. is Martha. I say yes. Okay. Vote is three to nothing in favor. And you can get oh, somebody there's a to pen up there yeah. behind your laptop. I forgot to put a fresh one there. So yeah, if you could get uh, Abby to sign that, that would be awesome. Thank you. 
very, very much, everyone. Thank Good you. So much better. Good. Uh, Good luck you, with your project. Do you want us to email you when the permit's ready so you can come pick it up? Yes, please. Okay. Because, yeah, we'll have to do an administrative site plan report. Do you have my email? Yes. Okay. Ben, I got a quick question. Are you going to do the welding on site or are you going to do it? I think that would be a great. We might do some, but most of it we'll probably do at the shop. People love to watch stuff. Yeah, they do. It would be a demonstration. <laughs> you could charge. Drinks, good, Drinks at a show. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> there probably will be some on site welding. I'm certain of it. You'll be the hottest bar in town. Right. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thank you, Abby. Okay, we still have no one here for 75 Main Street. Yeah, I tried to, we'll see, I tried to text her with some other options because my emails at this point, it looks like her email system is blocking me. Uh-oh. Yep. Okay, so we'll move forward to the next application for 149 Main Street. The application for Gary Residence, applicant Owen Fisher Home. If somebody here for this project, come forward and have a seat and get close to the microphone. Yeah, so we have lots of people here actually, including a bunch online, so. <laughs> James is in person, uh, Tom Bachman and uh, Dan Wheeler are remote. And we also have Dan Hassan, who is uh, the development consultant for uh, the Gary residents. Ron Stevens, who you met, three or four weeks ago when we did a preliminary review is on vacation and Dan Hassan is here to represent the owner. Thank you. Uh, uh, there's different than what no, the same. I just okay. they, they have printouts. Yep. Everybody's got the printouts. Okay. In whatever order you guys choose, go ahead and describe your project. I guess I, I will start out here. Um, it really hasn't changed significantly from what you saw three or four weeks ago or four or five weeks ago, whatever it was. We are proposing to build a, an addition or uh, to the Gary residence. And just to refresh the Gary residence provides 13 beds of assisted living. The memory care facility will provide 18 memory care beds. And uh, the complexity of this site is that we are in the floodplain. So in order to meet uh, city and FEMA requirements, our first floor of our addition uh, needs to be 30 inches above the, the existing first floor of the Gary residence. And when you look at the plans, you will see that we have a link that connects the two buildings. And in that link is a um, ramp system that takes you up to the first floor of the Gary residence, and then you can proceed up to the first floor of the memory care facility. Uh, since we talked last time, <clears throat> I think last time there was uh, the, the um, hand sketch that you saw indicated we had a roof garden. Unfortunately, because of initial uh, uh, cost estimate, that has had to go away. So we no longer are proposing that. The rest of the project is very similar to, I think, what you'd seen before. We have been working with Scott Newman, who is a uh, historic preservation consultant for the owner. And he has been our interface with uh, the State Historic Preservation Office with Elizabeth Peebles. So we've had uh, several meetings going back and forth. We believe we have addressed all of uh, uh, Elizabeth Peoples comments. She's reviewing it right now uh, for our Act 250 application. So we expect to hear back from her momentarily. So the addition is, and, and, and again, I'm repeating some of the stuff we talked about last time, but I just want to make sure everybody understands this. We do need to provide a fire stair that serves the second and third floor of the Gary residence. Right now there is a uh, fire escape on the back of the building. So our uh, part of our new construction will be a link from the second, third floor that goes to a fire rated uh, three story stair tower that you choose down on and uh, to, to, to create. The proposed memory 
care facility is all one level. Um, basically, it just doesn't work to have, you can't have memory care on multiple levels. It needs to be on one level. Uh, as part of the memory care facility, there is a private memory care garden. Um, if you look, I'm not sure, you probably got the drawings all in front of you. So if you look at the renderings toward the end of the, actually, last package, last page of the package. Give me a second and I will try and pull it up on the share screen. Okay, good. Well, there's also, are you looking at the last page of your package or what I gave to design review? <laughs> That's a very good question, uh, so you want the the renderings, right? Yes, exterior. Okay. Yep. So give me just a second. I want to make sure I'm zoomed in on it before I do a share screen. Otherwise, I'm going to make everybody dizzy. Uh, perfect. That's exactly what we want to look at. So what you're looking at here is the three-story stair tower that we need for what we are doing with the existing building. We are absolutely doing everything we can to respect that beautiful building that we've got. So we're touching it as lightly as we can. The link is only about eight feet wide, the glass link that takes you to the stair tower. Um, and then we're, we're obviously, our stair tower and our uh, proposed building is all brick. And if you see where the two fellows are standing in the rendering, that is the private memory garden that is associated with the first floor of the memory facility. Basically, that has to be a self-contained garden so that people can't wander. And also, uh, we do not want the memory care people to be, um, I don't know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm describing it, but we don't want them to be impacted by what, what's happening outside of the gap in the wall, too. And if you look to the right entry from drive D, you can see the, uh, there, you can see the, uh, the massing of the existing building. Uh, basically, it's all brick. We have two uh, soldier courses at the corners. We have two soldier courses above each window. Uh, the windows are all black, uh, aluminum clad. Uh, the sills are um, uh, precast concrete, and we have precast concrete cap on the top. All of the mechanical equipment is roof mounted. And it is screened with a, uh, a screening wall that uh, when James explains the landscaping, uh, we can, we can uh, show you exactly what we're looking at for the screening walls. Now, uh, Meredith, could you go back to the overall floor plan? Yep, give me just a minute. Uh, are you looking for the site plan or the floor plan? Okay, I guess Meredith, uh, Dan just reminded me, I don't think you do have a floor plan. So let's go to the landscape plan. <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay. Let me know what you want me to zoom in on. Okay, James, I'm going to turn this over to you to just give an overview of the landscape plan. And make sure you're right near that yep. microphone. You can shift it closer to you if you need to. All right. Hi, I'm James Finley Sheriff, uh, landscape architect with Wagner Hodgson. Um, uh, excited to be working on this great project. Uh, I live here in Montpelier. Um, similar to Tom and GBA, our first uh, decision was to recognize the historical importance of the existing structure there. And um, as a result, we've literally done no intervention on the front of the building. The trees, the street trees, and all of the existing trees um, that uh, face up onto Main Street will remain. As you come down the drive and head back uh, to the parking area, we've created a very sort of clean, simple drop-off uh, sequence uh, shaded by a birch tree. We'll have some granite chunk benches there for people to sit on as they uh, await arrival or pickup. Uh, moving further down, as Tom mentioned, we have a memory garden there um, that is uh, screened from the uh, screen from outside, but as you can see, we have it, you know, handsomely planted with all sorts of hydrangea and different flowering things. Um, then as we continue moving uh, down through the parking, our 
uh, challenge was to screen the extended foundation, and we've done that with uh, a series of different grasses, ornamental grasses. And behind those grasses, we'll have Boston Ivy trained up onto that brick building. So we expect that to really sort of uh, soften some of the hard edges uh, of the building. In terms of shading, there's some beautiful existing silver maples uh, right on the southern property edge there. We're going to leave those. Those will uh, adequately shade the parking lot. There's also some existing cedars there. We will leave those um, untouched and have adjusted our paving to make sure um, that these, the screening um, of the southern edge is maintained. Also along the eastern edge, we're going to keep those big cedars. Um, as we get up to the northern, sort of northeastern corner of the site, um, the cedars may come in uh, conflict with the construction. We're going to work with arborists to make sure we can protect them as well as possible. Any cedars that are injured will replace um, with new ones. Also on that uh, eastern side there, we have a sidewalk or a path kind of going up uh, past to catch that egress and entrance stair. And that path works its way around to the north, um, flanked on both sides by native uh, shade tolerant fern mix. Um, we expect the residents to do this circuit and uh, have really tried to make it as beautiful as possible, given the limited space. Along the north side, the sidewalk walks its, works its way back to Main Street, um, at which point we come across this terrace that will serve the uh, entire facility. Um, in that terrace, if you could just go a little further west, Meredith, there it is. Um, we have, again, these granite chunk benches and a flexible space. Um, with an arbor for shade um, uh, for whatever event they have, dining, perhaps the guests will just sit out there or the residents will sit out there and enjoy a, a drink or whatever. Again, nicely shaded and in the um, right up against that beautiful existing tree there. To the north of this space, we're proposing a, um, a full perennial uh, garden planting. Again, shade tolerant and primarily native um, to be enjoyed as part of that uh, circuit around the the site. I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. And actually, uh, if, if I could just jump in from what this is Tom Bachman. Um, James just reminded me, you know, he had mentioned the Boston Ivy. I mean, one of our initial concepts of, with this building was to not distract from this building and make this almost a background building. And so we see this background building, you know, obviously it's much lower. And we see the brick walls as we put it almost like garden walls. Um, and they are going to become eventually, they're not going to be completely green, but they're going to be softened quite a bit with this Boston Ivy. So as I say, this was always a, a concept to make this building stand behind and not compete with the, uh, the uh, beautiful building we have out front. So we're trying to make this as much of a, uh, I don't want to say non-building, but I guess background building as we possibly can. Now, Meredith, if you want, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the elevations. Uh, I've got to remember which way they are. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, I think the elevations are up in the beginning. Give me a second. Maybe not. There we go. There you go. There you go. I don't know if people can really see this, but we pulled out all the materials on this. We're trying to be as uh, compatible as possible. You know, the, the, the main masses of the building where the residence rooms are, are that's all brick. Uh, the links are wooden, uh, especially on the east side. We wanted to do some clapboard siding to make a gesture to the neighbors that are on the other side of the cedar hedge. Um, Trying to figure out which side I'm supposed to be showing here on Zoom. There now, we go. That, okay, that might is, help. This is actually a good one. Okay, it's uh, moved to the uh, east just a little bit, Meredith, if you would, please. Uh, <laughs> right or left? Um, screen right. Screen right. Screen, screen right. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No, other way? Yeah, you had it. <laughs> right. Okay, right there. Freeze it. Perfect. Okay, this is, uh, this is a, actually a, an area that we've worked quite closely with Elizabeth Peebles on. This is, this is the link that takes you from existing Gary residents up to the 30 inches above the, uh, in the memory care that we talked about. 
This is being articulated as a porch. It's going to be, uh, you know, white columns uh, infilled with windows. So we want to articulate this as much as a porch. We're obviously not making it look like it was built in what was the ancient building? 1941. But we want to make this to be. This is sort of the transition from the historic building to then our new building. Um, this is the area that James had just explained. Uh, there will be an outdoor terrace. And there's a pergola just to the, the left of this, this porch area. It's going to be a standing sea metal roof. We have snow guards on there. And we think this is going to be a very pleasant place for the uh, existing area with folks to hang out. And just a clarification, um, James had mentioned the walk that went around the building for exercise. That is intended for the, Gary, uh, the current Gary uh, residents that live there. Memory care facility or memory care residents will really not be leaving the building other than Well, you can see that um, we have on this elevation all the materials are called out. Anything that's labeled one is brick facing. Um, we included a an image of what that brick's looking like. We're not. It's a little redder than the Gary residence. We're, we don't want to match that existing. existing. Uh, we'd like to contrast it a little bit so it is a bit redder. It's a similar texture to what we've got. Uh, the, I, I think we talked about the concrete cap and the concrete sills of the windows. And then we have exposed architectural concrete at the base. And again, because if you remember, we are 30 inches above grade. We will have 30 inches of concrete exposed. Uh, Dan and I have been talking about make, uh, using a um, burlap, uh, bag, rub. Yeah, bag rub to finish on there, which would be a much smoother concrete. So it's not going to look just like raw concrete. Um, let's see. The, the uh, uh, screening walls for the mechanical equipment up on the roof and for the dumpster enclosure. Uh, those are going to be horizontal slats. Um, they will be either IPE or cedar, and both of those woods are going to weather to a gray. Um, the reason we can't be specific right now, I mean, I'm sure most of you know, uh, materials and availability supply chains are a little in question right now. So we're making our best guess right now as to what we can get, and. Um, you know, if, if there are significant changes, if, if there's a supply chain and we, we can't get something that we have described tonight, then I think we'll just have to come back to you. But we think, you know, that the, the uh, materials are going to be very similar for the screening, whether it be IPE or cedar, white cedar. Uh, the attachments to the building are all just clapboard. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Standing seam metal roofs are on any of the pitched roofs. One thing you do, uh, number 10, if you look on there, we do have to have floodgates in this link. We have included cuts on those. How many floodgates do we have? I think we're looking at seven flood vents. We had to do a per, pretty thorough calculation uh, to figure out what was going to uh, equalize the pressure if there is water on the outside of the building. So we've got seven of those. We've tried to make those. With, uh, Industry as we can try to keep them close to the building uh, so they don't stand out. Those are going, those are uh, basically, I think they're anodized, aren't they? Anodized finish. Uh, we've had a, I shouldn't say a heck of a time, but we've had a, uh, a little bit of research just to try to find a thermal flood, uh, flood vent that will give us a, a decent R value. And we've got one, you know, it, it, it's not going to be as robust as the walls, but it, it will work. As we have, uh, I'm sure you know we have a very uh, strict energy code we have to pass on a building like this. So that's kind of an overview. Um, and we had to answer any questions. Quick question from the exterior on the, I guess it would be the east, or I'm sorry, south side of the building. The screening wall for the memory garden, is that white or is it going to be a natural color or or what's the color of that? Yeah, that's, 
that that will be the same as the clapboard, which is a, a, a gray green. Yeah. Repeat that again, please. The clapboard is what? The clapboards are going to be a, a kind of a gray green. It's what we're looking at right now. Okay. So that would match that, Eric. And then one other question. If you look at the the three-story tower between the two existing and new building, at the top it has some detailed cornice work. Is there going to be something similar on the single story behind it, or is that just a cap, just a flat cap? Can you get a little closer to the microphone? Sure. I, yeah, it'll be the same as the single story structure, just a cast concrete, simple cornice cap. And under the cap, Eric, we have uh, two soldier courses running around the entire building. We've done the same thing on the uh, the stair tower, too. Okay. It was just, we could see the, on the picture of the stair tower, we could see the cornice, the detail on the cornice, but it wasn't clear on the single story building. And that's a it seems to be a nice feature. It, yeah. Well, the intent is to match those. We will match those. Okay, thank you. And I think it's pretty clear in your drawings, but I'm just going to ask about the uh, the privacy screening for the memory care garden is shown in the renderings as a is a white what looks like sort of metal finish thing, but I think it's called out to be EPE or cedar. Correct. And you're, in your drawings, and I just want to make sure that it's the EPE cedar. Yes, that's what it is, Ben. Yeah, great. Uh, Tom, this is Martha. Um, how close are you to this um, St. Paul Street border? 10, is it 10 feet? Okay. So it gives some space are there for those the neighbors. Property? Are you talking about the property line there? Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's 10 feet. Okay. Okay, I was thinking about the neighbors back there. Yeah, and uh, Don, uh, the executive director, and Rebecca Hassan, uh, the development consultant, did meet with neighbors, and they were, you know, they wanted to make sure that they, the privacy screen was staying. They, you know, the seat and edge we've got there. Yeah. Um, so we are doing our absolute best. We're assuming it is. But as James had mentioned, if any of the cedar hedges is damaged by construction, uh, they will be required to replace that with, uh, cedar hedge, with, with equal cedars. Okay, thank you. Now, we do have a question from a member of the public when you're ready. One of the people on Zoom. Okay, I, I will let, we'll let Meredith coordinate that, but okay. if <laughs> anyone from the public has anything to, any questions or anything to add? I'll yes. let you. So Diane, you had your hand raised. Yes, I did. Hi, I'm Diane Safran, and I live along with my husband Lou in um, the the property that was just mentioned. So we live on St. Paul Street, uh, 24 St. Paul Street, in the very small yellow house behind the cedar hedges. So we had a very um, we had a very good talk with Dawn, um, I guess last week or so, and we did uh, look over briefly the, um, the drawings that Meredith just sent us this afternoon. So a couple of very quick questions. You've touched on some of the issues, but I wanted to get a little more clarification. And by the way, you can see we are in our kitchen, and if you look out our window, you can see the hedges <laughs> right there. Um, the hedges on our side are about three feet from our house, four feet from our house. Um, so it's obvious to us that the hedges are very critical. Um, unfortunately, over the years, because of the snow plowing and um, things that went on in the, in the very back, the hedges have actually become kind of thinned out. So I would hope that when things are finished and attention is being made to them, um, they can be adequate. Um, 
That was one thing. So the hedges are really, really critical to us. I, I would hope that they don't have to come down during the building because that would make life pretty difficult for us. Um, you know, we, we don't have the air conditioning and we look right out the windows in the summer and fall. Um, in terms, as I understood the, the new um, drawings, what would be directly behind our kitchen window is the maintenance building. And so I'm just gonna focus on these things because these are very big to us, although they're small details in this entire huge uh, ambitious project. But the maintenance building um, looks like it is standing basically where the dumpsters are now, which is outside our window. So um, I gather that it's not going to be very tall. Um, it looked like in the rendering, the architectural rendering, it looked like there was some little green space between the hedge and the building, but um, I don't know if that was just in a, a sort of a generic rendering or whether the building will be exactly right up against the hedges. Um, and what comes to my mind in that regard is, will the, they be able to maintain the hedges um, if in fact the building is right up against them. Um, the other question I had was about the dumpsters and I see that there's going to be fencing around the, the new positioning of the dumpsters, which is to the left of our kitchen window. And so our, is the fencing going to go around the back and the side of the dumpsters? So it will screen the dumpsters from our view. Um, and um, are the dumpsters going to be significantly bigger than the ones that exist now? I mean, I sort of guess they might because you have a lot more residents in the new project. Um, when we spoke with Dawn, we, uh, there, uh, some of the neighbors and, and us on Zoom, we talked about the lighting and I mentioned the lighting and, you know, there has to be lighting in, in that kind of a facility outside. And she did say something about motion sensitive lighting, which would make our life a lot better. Uh, so that's something also that I hope can be considered at least certainly towards the back of the whole complex. And the, the final issue that I was curious about was um, <coughs> the ventilation that's gonna be on the roof. Uh, of the new building and how far back along that length of building it is going to be situated. Is it gonna be something that's really towards the end and therefore will become very audible to us? Like I said, we, we don't do air conditioning and we have our windows open and uh, here we are in our kitchen um, right on the border. So those were the issues that I was curious to get a little more clarification and I, we really urge you, these things are not necessarily huge uh, to pay attention to on your end, but they're definitely hugely impactful on our end. So the, the cedar hedges, the position um, of the maintenance building, uh, the question of the screening of the dumpsters and the lighting and, and the ventilation in terms of sound. So th those were, um, all the issues that really impact us. So um, a lot of other things look great, but we just wanted some clarification. So thank you very much. This is James, the landscape architect. Can I respond to those questions? Yes, go ahead. Hi, Diane. Diane, my name is James. I'm a landscape architect. I live here in Montpelier. I'm also a member of the tree board here. I do take great pride in all of our city trees and um, the cedar hedge is very important to us as well. So what we'll do is um, once we get the construction team on board, we're gonna contract with an arborist to come and take an evaluation of the cedars. Um, and uh, if required, you know, based on their management plan, we will look at fertilizing the cedars and getting them on a maintenance or sort of fertilizer management program. If we need to cut any of the roots uh, to allow for the construction, we'll have them air spaded and those roots will be treated with a hormone which suppresses the growth of the cedar during the construction period. So it reduces the stress on the cedar during the, that period. So we will go to, you know, we're gonna really thoroughly make sure that those cedars are taken care of as best they can be. Um, 
I can speak to the dumpster. The dumpster will be surrounded by fence on all four sides. The lighting has a mode that it goes into in the evening where um, after a certain time set by the, the owner, the lights go into a 40% energy saving mode. Um, and then beyond that, they become only motion sensor, uh, turned on by the motion sensor. So at night it will be dark. It will not be very bright for you at all. The maintenance building, um, but there is space between the cedars and the maintenance building. Uh, our thought was to just leave um, a native uh, red fescue grass to let it grow. We won't uh, cut it back. We'll just let it grow. It flops over and um, we were just going to leave it at that. So mm -hmm. hopefully no lawnmower is going back and forth there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think those were the questions. Uh, there was also the question about the location of the rooftop ventilation system on the building. How far back is that? Okay, I defer to Tom on that one. Okay. So basically, we have we have a uh, uh, air source heat pumps. We have uh, we have one piece of equipment up there plus a generator, and it is. Well, I don't have an exact. Do we have the uh, exact? Let me just where that is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where do we have it though? So I can tell them where this is. Yeah. Okay, it is Diane at the east end of the building. Um, so it, it's, I wish I could. Um, basically, what the zoning regulations say, Act 250, is that uh, noise level has to be 55 decibels or lower at the property line. And what we are specifying is equipment that will be 55 decibels or less on the building. So we are doing better than what the uh, requirements are. And Meredith, I can't remember if this is a requirement of yours or if this is an Act 250 requirement. Um, I, I think that's an Act 250 requirement, but Mont Montpelier does have a noise ordinance. Okay. Um, it's not separate from the zoning regulations. Um, so I would need to to look back at the Montpelier's noise ordinance, and that can be something you know. Now that we've had the design review committee meeting and know that that's a question, I can circle back to that in my staff report before the development review board meeting, um, and it might be something where you can send me. I don't know if we have a rooftop that shows exactly where that equipment will be. It might be that you send me a new image before DRB to show me where that is. Okay, we can do that. Okay, awesome. I, I did I did want to clarify, you said that the ventilation system is in the east. Could you, I don't know which exactly is east, so if you could tell me where it is in relation to the the building, that your building east, is. The east is at the end of the building where your house, where your property is. Oh, yeah. so it's on our end of the building. Yes, it is. The, uh -huh. the, the air source heat pump is. The yeah. generator is at the west end of the building. Okay. Is that the noisy? Which one is noisier? The generator is the noisier one, but the generator only kicks on, uh, I think it's once a week for 15 minutes. It has to run to lubricate its parts. And it would, it would uh, run, obviously, if there was power outage because it runs the elevator. Yeah. Things. So, yeah. Diane, that is the noisier piece of equipment will be the generator. Okay. Okay, um, I, I did just have one other uh, question in terms of the hedges and, and then I'll let everybody continue. Um, it would be great if when the attention is given towards the hedges, uh, they could be more of a screen than they are because as I said, over the years in terms of the thickness of them or the healthiness or the number of them because over the years as the uh, plows pushed the huge amounts of snow further and further back, really right into the hedges, it, it really damaged them. And since we are so close, we, we really see pretty much we right through them. We, we, the we see the dumpsters and we see the garbage cans and we see everybody putting everything in it. And, you know, uh, we're, we're neighbors, we're close, but it would be great if considering there'll be more things back there and the building, it would be great if they could function a little better than they have they've sort of deteriorated over the years. You know, we've been here 15 years and we've watched them kind of 
get thinner and thinner. So, uh, we're hopeful that, that with that kind of tree expertise that you're going to use, that they can really function to help us and then we'll be happy. Yeah. Diane, one hand, this is Tom Bachman speaking. With the new layout, with the maintenance building and yeah. the dumpster with the enclosure around, there's yeah. no way they can be pushing snow yes. out there any further. So actually, I think that's going to make your situation better. Yes. What it means is um, that the Gary residence is going to have to truck off snow. So yes. In a heavy snow event, they will store snow in a couple of parking lots or parking spaces, and they will have to have that snow. Um, yeah. And and what that I, I thought the same thing that that was kind of a silver lining when I looked at the uh, the renderings and what what actually will be in the maintenance building? It's basically you, you know the uh, garage that they've got in the backyard now. It's basically mm -hmm. where they store um, patio furniture that sort of thing. So I see. It's I basically see. it's a storage facility. It's not going to be a work room. Okay. It's a garage door and a, a people door. But it's okay. just to, uh, to for, for the maintenance person to store his so uh, equipment in. Yeah. yeah, and and you said that was the that building would also be some kind of a clabbered. Yes, it siding? is. It's okay. okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much for clarifying everything. Thank you. Stand, well is there anyone else who? from the public who has anything to add or questions? Nope. There's no, everybody else who's on is for applications. So we're good as applicants or team. Okay. Do any of the other committee members have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? I do not. Okay. No. And we can go through the criteria for the project, for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic, of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, there are no deteriorated features that, that apply here. Uh, any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, uh, such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. For new construction, shall be considered to be compatible if the materials used possess a kind or type that are appropriate to the district. Materials selected shall either fit the neighborhood context of the proposed building and or reflect the nature and use of the structure. That's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size scale architectural features, detailing, and overall character of their primary historic building and nearby historic properties. That's acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project is located. That's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash, storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible. Acceptable. Height of building additions shall not overwhelm the primary facade and must consider varied heights of existing building and adjacent buildings. Height of a new building shall be compatible with the varied heights of existing adjacent buildings, acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height or facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, 
The visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of the building shall create a rhythm that's acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs for my level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. Roof forms and pitch shall not be altered on the primary facade acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but shall respect the original historic building's architectural features acceptable. Roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible acceptable. Outdoor lighting features. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. Acceptable. <laughs> this is a long one, Steve. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> There's a lot more to go through. Well, there are a lot of components of this yeah. project. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings and mechanical equipment screening? And for historic structures, existing historic and contributing resources such as street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard patterns shall be retained or restored when impacted by the alteration of a building. Walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and in and the building in scale, traditional materials and design that reflects the period of the building and or is compatible with the surrounding context acceptable. Criteria for historic structures only. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to extent possible. Uh, when preservation not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. It doesn't seem to even be applicable so far. Uh, windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with historic building style materials and architectural features. So yeah, there's, there's only a minimal impact because of the addition in the rear of the existing building, yep. but any of those changes are acceptable. Porches and stairs on historic structures. Location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of these ex existing buildings. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building design and layout. And again, the addition to the rear of the existing building uh, achieves that. Criteria for new building. New development shall incorporate sustainable design and construction methods and materials compatible with historic materials and styles acceptable. Scale and massing of new buildings shall be compatible with surrounding structures acceptable. Orientation. New buildings shall be oriented toward and relate both functionally and visually to public streets and or common greens, parks, or plazas to provide a uniform streetscape, new principal structures shall be located and oriented with their fronts parallel to the street and with a setback distance comparable, com comparable to adjacent structures acceptable. This, this one's a little different. I have these in here because I mean, we do have the new shed 
the addition's a little different because you're you don't really have a choice on orienting it towards the street because it's at the rear. Yes. So it was kind of hard to throw these in well, they're, and they're, not be able to put too many notes in. There are portions of yeah. each of these that are applicable to some degree. Yep. Continuity of physical elements, such as yards, fences, evergreen masses, or building facades along a street, acceptable context and connectivity. Building design shall be sensitive to the overall character and context of the design review overlay district and to adjacent buildings, acceptable accessory buildings and structures. New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of the existing building or proposed new building. And again, the only recommendation was what was brought up uh, in terms of the conversation was that the cedar hedges at the rear of the property will be maintained and or supplemented to provide adequate screening for the residential properties on St. Paul and Brown Streets. And given all of that, do I hear a vote to for approval on the project? Eric says yes. Uh, ben says is, yes. This is Martha. I say yes. And Steve says yes. So it's approved four to nothing. Um, just so you know, we do not have a development review board meeting tonight, and we do have our representative for our first application. So if everybody is willing to stick around, um, we have the room to be able to do our third application and the rest of our business. Uh, you, the... Can you can James sign the uh, recommendation form for the applicant, or do I need to scan it to somebody else to sign? If James feels comfortable signing it, we're fine with that. You okay you're, with that, James? Okay. You're on okay. the hook. <laughs> so, yeah. Now you're a project. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can sign right there. Yep, you can sign right there. Um, and then I will see everybody in two weeks for the development review board hearing. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. And good luck with your project. Thank you. Good night. Okay, so we do have Sarah here for um, the Bailey Road signage. Sarah, if you can unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> hi, Sarah. Hi. So let me know if you want me to screen share your application, um, at least the images of the sign. I can do that. Or Martha, if you need to see it, um, I can pull that up on the screen. Um, is it different than what's in our packet? No. Okay. No, but just sometimes I can zoom in a little bit if it's needed, but this is, this one's fairly simple compared to everything else we've discussed tonight. That's true. Very true. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah, and describe your signs for us. Sure. So I'm using the existing sign area where number nine had their um, old sign. And I'll be painting um, plywood black to match the current existing trim on the building. And I'm having a plywood base because there's holes left over from the um, previous sign. So I just wanted a smooth finish. And then um, on that plywood base, we will put individual letters spelling out Bailey Road. And they'll be 20 inches tall, 1 8 inch thick. It's made out of steel with a gold powder finish used for exterior and interior signage. I believe on like page two or on the cut sheet, you can kind of see the proportions that that would look like. So it should fill most of the sign space. Um, and it, I mean, that's pretty much it. We might do a, a little bit of molding to hide any of the like imperfections between the plywood base and the old exterior sign, which has a little bit of, um, little bit of trim so I just kind of want to hide some of that um like weird like circle molding just to make it feel all finished um I think I can share my screen or my content on my screen you and should be I able just, to I just want to show you what the interior looks like I have um lettering behind my my cash wrap and this will look similar to this 
Did it come through at all? No, try again. Okay. So there we it, go. Won't, it won't have the tagline for your home and closet, but it would just be the Bailey Road letters Let on a black a background. That same kind of font, Sarah? Um, it will be the font that you see in the cut sheet, which is um, a little bit more. A little heavier. A little bit heavier, yep. Okay. okay. Um, also, the background will just be solid plywood and not the shiplap that you see here, but it's still that same color gold. Um, yep. And then, Sarah, will the letters be held off the plywood like in your inspiration photo, or will they be flat applied? Nope, there'll be a space between the plywood and the letters. Each and letter has... Um, um, Go ahead. a separate mounting hole and screw that kind of leaves leaves a little bit of space. Like how much, like a three quarters of an inch, an inch, like how much space do you think will be back there? You don't know. I don't know. I could measure the ones behind my cash wrap. I can fit like I can fit maybe like my pinky finger behind it, but it's pretty tight. Yep. Okay. Great. And then I assume the screws, they're providing you with screws that have also been powder coated gold yep. to match with the letters. Um you you won't actually see the you won't actually see the screw through the letter with how right. the hardware is on the back. Even better. Nice. Yeah. And then you're applying for the sign at the rear too, right, Sarah? I'd like to remove that application. My original, my current sign doesn't fit in the space. Oh. So I'm just going, it, it like fit really tight, but I don't really like the look of it. So I'm just not going to move forward with that. Okay. Is the sign band the 222 inches? Is that in your cut sheet? You've got the letters take up 174 inches. Yep. Is that the whole sign band? No, the whole sign band is the 222. Okay. Anyone have any comments, questions, suggestions? Head shake from Eric. I guess the only question I have is, um, you're going to be painting that plywood that is going to skim over the uh, the sign band. Yeah. And I'm curious. I guess the color is to match the. Um, the black that's above it there and that goes into that uh, all that molding detail. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether that's all going to get painted at the same time or j to, to blend or whether it's just going to be close enough, which is probably the case. Um, I'm willing, I could change the black. I worked, I painted the, did a fresh coat of paint on the bottom of the um, entryway already to match and I used what Tim Heaney already had so I would be willing to not do tricorn black and do what they had in, in the past 
I just think it would be nice if it all was consistent and not like just a a, a fresh coat in the sign band. But if I you've are, if you've done the bottom one way and are willing to kind of make it all be the same, I think that would be great. So you're just saying like a fresh coat on the molding so that it doesn't look like one's faded and one isn't. Correct. Right. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I would love to do that. You tell him. <laughs> <laughs> my dog, my dog agrees. <laughs> How thick is the plywood you're going to use to cover up? Um, is three quarter inch like a traditional? I guess I didn't go into that much detail there. I would just use a traditional. I'd like as thin as possible because I want the sign to stay within the brick bookends of that fascia board yeah does it does it, does it tuck under the molding on the uh, uh along the top that's there the existing black part it will fit underneath the like you know see that green little band that is around the previous sign barely but the, yes the goal is to fit within that green kind of frame and then if we need to use any kind of um, molding just to make it feel seamless, we would do that. And I assume you're using like an MDO exterior plywood, paper yeah. paste that's really flat and smooth. Yeah, my um, contractor had, had that in mind, I believe. Yep. And depending on how well the top of the plywood is covered by the existing molding, you may want to put a thin cap on top of the plywood because between the afternoon sun hitting your sign and the, the, the funky weather we seem to have here in Vermont, uh, it's a good idea to protect the edges, at least on the top and sides, just to prevent them from delaminating, which I can attest will happen if you don't. <laughs> I will take all of the ad advice. We want you to be around for a while and we want your sign to last. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay, that's noted. Any other comments, questions or suggestions? Okay, I'll go down through the criteria for the sign. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior design, exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structure of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. I didn't ask, is there any lighting on the sign now or any proposed? No lighting now and none proposed. Okay. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and signs, size among all signs. Acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. Acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. Acceptable. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in the mortar joints. It doesn't look like that's the case here. It's in an existing wooden sign band, but I'll just say not applicable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be of the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric says yes. Ben. Martha says yes. And Steve says yes. So the vote is four to zero in favor. Thank you. So, I think Sarah, we're whoops. To see what you decide to do on that back door, too. Me, too. That will have to be phase two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If I guess I'm just putting this out there. If I wanted to paint the current yellow 
black to match, is that something I come back to the design review committee for? No, if all you're doing is painting that rear surface yeah. um, to, because that's already painted, you can just change the color of that to black without having to get any zoning permit. Okay, no. thank you. Could we give approval to do a similar sign on the back in gold letters, obviously at a smaller scale to fit into that small space? She's already paid the fee, so. Mm -hmm. it, then we can we'll, we can do that as an option for you. That would be great. Or Sarah, I would I would like to see you use your logo back there. That'd be great. You, yeah. said, that you're, you said your existing sign is too large. It is, yeah. Yeah, but if you were to scale it down, would you like to do that? I could. I'd rather do it in gold than um, like a wooden frame, what it is now. Okay. So, so something like what you have on the back of the application, but in gold and scaled yeah. down. Yes. So this yes. here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, if you, she's already paid for that. So if you approve that yes. and give her those two options for the rear sign, we can do that and give her the option. And then she can figure out what she, what she can get created mm -hmm. that makes sense. I can um, show you what the layout would look like. Uh, maybe I can't right away. Let's see. So we give her the option of just of doing gold letters or doing the logo sign with gold letters on a black background yeah. as well. Yep, and smaller. Yep, you can always, you can pretty much always go smaller with the signs. Okay. If you need to. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yeah, your share screen wasn't working. I don't know if you want me to, was it something that was in the application? No, it was, um, it was kind of my new logo, which I, I was trying to figure out how to share it. If you have it open and you hit the share screen button on the bottom of your Zoom window, you should be able to, it should give you options of the various different files you have open. Okay, let me um, do this. I apologize for the. Oh, it's okay. Okay. And again, the rec the option was for the rear building entrance sign. And again, you can either use Bailey Road gold letters on a black background or use the logo sign with the lettering in gold on a black background. Oh, so this is the new logo. If you'd look this is it. the new logo. I wouldn't do the Montpelier, Vermont, and there wouldn't be a shadow behind the fleur-de-lis but it would be the image of the home the fleur-de-lis and then the stacked logo okay. if you could send me that image because it's something you've shared with the committee i can yes. add it to the file as the you know a new version of what the sign might look like that okay. would be great would you use the same font as you're using on the front or would you use that font I think I would need to use this sign maker couldn't do custom fonts, so I would have to use the same font on the front. Do you want me to put that back up? No. I okay. think it's okay. Okay. So you awesome. can, she could do either combination of lettering and, and logo using what she has or what she's showing there. Either yeah. one. Great. So Sarah, we'll just for the to actually issue the permit, I think we'll need to have a sense of how big that rear sign is going to be. Okay. Um, uh, just because we have to have documentation of how much total building sign area has been used up. Okay. Um, but you've got you know, the design review committee's approval. Um, 
that's a good and first again, step. And, and yes. Rear, based on the whatever limitation it may be, uh, on the back, it's just of a of a size and proportion uh, suitable for the existing framing. Yep. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to scan this and send it to you, Sarah, so you can sign off on it. So that'll be the first step. Um, we'll we'll discuss how to do it because I know you want to get your signage on the front up as soon as possible. And it sounds like you're ready to order that. Um, so we'll work out how to how to figure out the rear signage. Okay. Okay, that will be a little while anyway. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. You'll hear Thank from me you. via email. Okay. Thank sounds you. good. Bye. Good luck with your project and your Thank move you. and all of the above. <laughs> Appreciated. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting meeting minutes of March the seventh? I have. Yes, um, Steve, I noticed that after Eric entered the meeting, the next paragraph says that Liz asked if the signboard could be moved. That was actually me, not Liz. Thank you. Okay. Any other changes? Otherwise, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. All second. All in favor, speak your names. Eric. Ben. And Steve. So minutes are approved. I'll make that edit. Thank you. Any other business? I th one, one thing I should have brought it up at the beginning, but uh, I think there's an issue with some zoning changes that are coming up uh, that uh, changes the density on what is it, 1500. Yes, yes. residential what, 1500. Uh, and the, the and part of it involves the the uh, Mike Miller suggested in his note uh, to the city council that the design review be changed first because uh, what they're doing is, is the density is very likely, to, it, it, not very likely, but there's some chance buildings will be altered to have lots of uh, more units, smaller units, that's a, a building code rather than a density code. And so, uh, and in some places, that's resulted in teardowns and rebuilds because somebody could put a bigger house or a bigger building on a lot. Uh, I, I intend to go testify about two things at the city council meeting on Wednesday. And one is that, yes, the design review should, should is probably the best vehicle to prevent drastic changes in the neighborhood. And second, I would like to see the city consult with Design Review and the Historic Preservation Commission uh, when they're developing these kinds of regulations and codes because we're appointed and have to, they are the ones that are appointed because of our expertise and knowledge. And the city just sort of take advantage of that. I think that's a good idea because a lot of that zone is outside of design review. So there is really no approval process for somebody who may want to uh, take something down and put up just a big square box. Uh, there's no other review process. And if you, if you want to maintain any kind of character in those neighborhoods, I think if somebody wants to do something pretty, it's one thing to do an interior renovation or maybe put an addition on the back of an existing building but at some point, if there's a significant change in the character or appearance of a building for that purpose, I think it's a good idea to review a, a number of the items. Uh, the appearance of the building, the height, scale, parking. I mean, there are a lot of features that enter into somebody making a change like that. 
and there ought to be some kind of a review process for that, particularly if it's not in the existing design review district. Yeah, I mean, if it's a if it's a brand new building, it does have to go through a, a more limited um, architectural and, and character review uh, when it goes into major site plan. But that's just the development review board and it's not anywhere near as detailed as what we've laid out in the design regulations. Um, and really the ones that won't have any review like that are the additions or where they've suddenly switched out a bunch of windows. It's outside of design review. We don't, you know, it needs a building permit. It doesn't need a zoning permit if they've just changed out a bunch of windows and doors and revamped it to have, you know, four new entrances instead of one. So there's there's a lot that could be changed to change a character of a neighborhood without any look at you know, scale massing architecture, how it fits in at all. It would be nice if they want to increase the density to have some review of that, just yeah. so that, you know, you're not taking something maybe on uh, Liberty Street or a, a street that you're going to change the whole character of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. depending on what somebody puts back if there's not some kind of review. Oh, and Mike Mike Miller agrees with that opinion. His thought was, you know, See, make you sure design up. review matches with wherever you're suddenly getting rid of residential density. Yes. You got to lay that design review over it if you're going to get rid of this residential density. Steve, limits. you probably know as well as anybody, nobody knows where the real estate business is going. <laughs> Hard to predict. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the impact of, of the teardowns of smaller buildings is usually in resort areas and things like that. But somebody theoretically with this could tear down a two unit structure and put up an eight or 10 unit structure and increase the income from the property. Yes, so oh, absolutely. And where the break even is on that, who knows? So yep. So that we, that's at city we council. We are all for adding, <laughs> even though it probably would mean ultimately more work for the committee. We certainly would encourage that to happen so that it controls the quality of what's yep what's yep. either added to or what's replaced with. Yep. So that'll be at the city council meeting this Wednesday. That meeting, I think, starts at 530. The agendas are posted on the city's agendas and meeting minutes page. Um, and there's several items of business before they get to the zoning rewrite. This is one aspect of the zoning rewrite. But there's no telling they can change the agenda around too. They can change the agenda around. You're right. So probably log on at the beginning of the meeting. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Okay, anything else? Anybody have anything else to add? Do no. I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. I second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Next meeting is April the 4th. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for coming you, and have a nice evening. Bye bye. Thank you.